Look at verse 46 and 47. Have it, will you say amen? amen? And in the Voice Bible, paraphrase, it reads as such. And this is David talking to Goliath. It says, this very day the eternal one will give you into my hands. I will strike you down and cut off your head. I will feed the birds of the air and the wild animals, fields with the flesh of your Philistine warriors, then all the land will know the true God. There's a true God in Israel. Voice Bible reads that there is the true God is with Israel. And all those gathered here will know that the eternal one does not save by sword and spear. The battle is the eternal ones, and I will give you, and he will give you into our hands. Family, this morning we want to speak briefly, pleases the Lord, on the topic or the theme that is on your program, unlikely, not incapable. discussed how that sometimes many of us when we are given a position or a title or an anointing we want to rush into telling folk what to do 
But the scripture points out to us clearly that David had to be trained. And we also found out that through the anointing process, when Samuel went to anoint David as king, we found out that David was probably the most unlikely candidate. For he had brothers who were probably taller, more brown, and more handsome than he was. And he was one who was out in the field and dirty. He smelled like the animals. He was out there when Samuel came and he wasn't even in the presence of Jesse and the other brothers when Samuel came to pour out the oil. But the Lord said, is there enough? And as we continued reading, we found out that the Holy Spirit came upon David and David was then summoned unto Saul and went to Saul and was able to shoo away the unclean spirit that had come to vex Saul now because Saul had uh, been uh, stripped of the Holy Spirit because he was disobedient. Still unlikely. And then we find out that, that after David had went to Saul and been there for him for a little while, he goes back into the field. There's nobody in the field to notice him, to see him fight the bear, to see him fight the lions, to see him protect the sheep the way that he does, to see him to lay his life down daily so that the sheep could live. There's nobody out there. But David, the sheep, and the Lord. And every now and then it would be a monster or a villain or a, a, a predator that would come out there and David would allow the Holy Spirit to rise up in him and show the predator who the boss was. Yes. And so we've been navigating through by way of the Holy Spirit, 1 Samuel, the many, many lessons that are compacted down in these passages of Scripture. And many of us have seen them many, many times before, but the Lord continues to give new revelation on the same scripture, but a deeper level of context. Amen. And so my brothers and sisters, this morning we pick up where we left off last week when David uh, had come to the front line that day with some vittles for his brothers that his father had sent from home. And David gets there and finds out that uh, there's a giant over there by the name of Goliath. Do I have a witness? Yeah. He was calling out the army of Israel and, and, and speaking against the God of Israel. And, and David had a problem with it. Can't you imagine, my brothers and sisters, that as David is out there, he's been anointed to be king. So the Holy Spirit is now talking to him in a different context. The Holy Spirit is now guiding him in a different context. The Holy Spirit is now giving him instruction in a different context. So when he hears somebody speaking against that which has become his inner man, something that has become light within him, he got a problem wow. What are you trying to say, Reverend? What I'm trying to say is that, that the, the scripture has become life in you, my brothers and sisters. And God has discipled you. And you hear somebody speaking blasphemy against the God of your salvation. You are in a problem. Amen. What are you saying, Reverend? I ain't telling you to roll up your sleeve and start to punch it. I ain't telling you to start saying four-letter words trying to defend God. Because God don't need nobody to defend him. But I'm telling you, you should have a problem. That's right. Because if you're standing there idly by not saying nothing, if it don't bother you that they're talking about your Jesus, if it don't bother you that they are blaspheming his name and discrediting him to who they are, who are you? Is he really your God? Is he really your Savior? Is he really the one that you depend on? Is he really the one that you believe in to be your all in all? So David had a problem. And as he had a problem, David began to, to ask questions. Y'all know we talked about it last week. And as he began to ask questions, people wanted to hush him up. You know, like I told you, your family sometimes, they'll be the ones that want to hush you up. Yes. But David, the scripture says David ignored them. As I was just reminding me, oh wait. 
David said, oh, well, I came to do what the Lord called me to do. And what I'm trying to say this morning, family, is that when the Lord has called you to do something, it don't matter who tells you it ain't what it is. It don't matter who tells you not to do it. It don't matter who tells you that we've been doing it this way. It don't matter. You got to do what the Lord said to do just the way the Lord said do it. Amen. Have a witness this morning. Y'all going to pray with me. So when the scripture picks up this morning, right after David had tried on the king's arm, and he found out that it didn't fit, he found out that he couldn't move in the king's armor because the king's armor was not for him. He found out that God had called him to be different. He found out that God had called him to do a more special work. He found out that he could not wear the king's armor because the king's armor did not fit the role and the position and the calling that God had on his life. Amen, somebody. Because some of us been trying to walk in somebody else's footsteps for way too long. Some of us been trying to do it like so-and-so did it, and God has called us to do it completely differently. That's why it's not working out for you. Amen. 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 But the scripture says that, that when David, after he took off the king's armor, is when we pick up this morning, verse number 40, it says after he took off the king's armor, David began to uh, uh, gather the things that the Lord had given him instruction on what he ought to do. The yeah. Bible says he took a staff in his hand and he went to the stream. Look how strategic this is. He took a staff in his hand. Signifying that he was a shepherd. He took the staff in his hand. He went to the stream and he uh, picked out. Scripture says he went to the stream and chose five smooth stones. See, some of us have inherited some stuff. Yeah. And we've been carrying it around all this time. Y'all pray with me. Got all right. All right. We've been carrying it around all this time. And because we got that inherited stuff that we want to operate in because we saw our, our forefathers operating in it, we trying to fit a circle into a square hole and we carrying all this stuff and we wonder why our back hurt. We carrying all this stuff and we wonder why we weighed down. We wondering why nobody is receiving what we saying and God has called us to, uh, to pick up five smooth stuff. But you walking around, we walking around with these boulders on our back because we seen it done that way all our life. Thank you, Holy Ghost. When I first started using my iPad to preach from, there was some people who had a problem with it. First reason I use it is because, well, the young boy's eyes don't really act right all the time no more. I can see, but sometimes when I'm looking down at these words, they be grabbing each other. <laughs> yeah, keep living. <laughs> and, and, and so the other reason is, is that it illuminates a light. And I don't have to have that light hanging over the pulpit and turning that button on. <laughs> It illuminates a light up so I can see very well. Not only that, but it also, I can have the Bible, two or three different translations. I can have commentary. I can have stuff all on one screen. And I ain't got to come to the pulpit with a book bag. When I'm studying, I only have to have one device now. I ain't got a whole bunch of books spread out over my office desk, but don't say nothing real. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be a screenshot my desk and send it to y'all. Like, yeah, you do too. 
<laughs> but I got everything I need in one station. But people got a problem with that because they say, well, that ain't the Bible, that ain't holy. I know this ain't holy. It was made by man. But it has holy compartments that I can use it for the good of God. The day over that I'm lugging this big old heavy thing around. And why should I have to lug this around when this gives me the same scriptures? And only got to carry one little thin device. What are you saying, Reverend? I'm saying that some of us are stuck in an old mold and we cannot begin to break out of the clay. And we wonder why everybody passing us. Scripture says he went and chose five smooth stones. Do you realize that had he gone with the king's armor on and slowed him down, clank, 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 you do, hey, that armor might be what killed Papa. Because you can best believe that the enemy is upgrading his tool, he upgrading his uh, weapon, he upgrading his way of fighting, and we still walk around here, oh, it's going to be a brighter day. What? The day is here. All we got to do is stand up and realize that God is all shall overcome. And I ain't poking fun at that. I'm grateful for that. Those are the shoulders that I'm standing on. But we are overcame. And it's time for us to be bell stewards over what we come into. Say he chose five smooth stones. He kept them in a pouch. In the shepherd's bag. He didn't have no big heavy host on with a sword hanging out. A physical sword anyway. And it says he had a slingshot. All right. Ready as he approached the Philistine. Key word in that last sentence. The voice Bible says he had a sling ready. He had a sling ready. Re ready, ready, re ready. He had a sling ready. I ain't DJing up here. I'm trying to trying to help you understand. He had a sling ready. That's all right. That's all right. Some of us got the tool, but we ain't ready. Some of us brag about what we got and what we can do, but we ain't ready. Cause soon as something pop up, we get to fumbling and trying to figure it. You ain't never even used the tool that God gave you. How do you think you're going to be ready when it's time for warfare? You don't ever practice and pick it up and read it and see what it's capable of. You don't even know how to activate it, how to make it work. How are you going to be ready when it's time for warfare? Amen. I don't believe everybody that was in the war was killed by a friendly fire. All right. Mm. Some of them were killed by friendly, friendly fire. And it might sound harsh, it might sound bad, but some was killed by friendly, friendly fire. Because when you at that war and you in the bunker and that joker that's beside you supposed to be shooting over your head while you reload, he's standing there nervous, shaking, not knowing what to do. I'm convinced that he got popped right there in the bunker. Yeah. Because he's become more of a detriment to you than of a help. And he's going to get you killed if you don't get away from him or do something to get yourself to safety. What are you saying, Reverend? I'm saying that I got to be able to depend on he who is beside me. I got to be able to depend on that you're ready to go to war when it's time for spiritual warfare. I got to be able to depend on you not to be telling everybody. You better get ready. 
And if you if you if you dividing the army, what's that gonna do for us? Divide and we fall. What are you saying, Reverend? How does that apply to David? Because David followed the instruction of the Lord. David went to got his five smooth stones. David put them in the pouch like God told him to. David had been practicing his slingshot. He was together. His heart and his mind agreed, and the two became one. And when the two became one, you can't stop. It. And go back and ask yourself every time in your life your mind and your heart was distant from one another you had an agonizing moment I love her but I, I just can't uh, she done me wrong this time but I love her and I need to go back to her heart said we've been done wrong before mind said but we love her though uh, and you struggle with that thing forever but when your heart and your mind got on one accord Lionel Richard say, I'm, I'm, I'm leaving. <laughs> I'm leaving today. Yeah, it's easy like Sunday morning. Because <laughs> uh -huh. his heart and his mind begin to agree. Yeah. Yeah. And in the body of Christ, some of us are the mind, some of us are the heart, some of us are the hands, some of us are the feet. But if we go in all different directions, That's a good meal for the enemy. Stay with me this morning. David was together in his heart and in his mind. He was sure about what he was supposed to do. He knew how he was going to get it done. That's why he refused the king's armor. I can imagine that he didn't want to disrespect the king, so he tried it on. <laughs> But as soon as he got it on, he had to prove his point. Say, see this king? You see, this is too heavy. This is too big for me, so I can't wear this. And so I already got a plan, though. I'll get back with you in just a little bit. The scripture says that, look at this. Ooh, this was profound for me in so many, in a bunch of different ways. Look at verse 41. It said, the Philistine with his shield bearer. He had a, tell somebody, he had somebody with him. Yeah. See, the Philistine, he's supposed to be a tough dude. He's supposed to be gangster. Did the scriptures say he was a champion? Of the Philistine, I mean, he killed many men. And then I read the scripture, I'm like, wait a minute, though. He got somebody with him. I thought he was a thug. He's supposed to be a bad dude. Somebody with him. He got somebody with him. And, and the scripture said he was a shield bearer. But let me paint a picture for you. If you got anybody with you in the fight and they with you, they help. I don't care how you put it. They help. So he had an assistant. Where you at, shield bearer? Can you see? Right. Blocking me in front of me while I grab. <laughs> and what I'm trying to say to you this morning, family, we you don't have to fret and be afraid because if you just pay attention, if you could see your enemy ain't as powerful as he says he is, otherwise he wouldn't need no help. <laughs> he wouldn't need nobody to stand with him while he's trying to take you down. This young shepherd boy who's trying to do the will of God. If he was all that mighty and all that powerful, he would came across that valley anyway. Yeah. All right, so you were standing back there. Y'all pray with me. I'm trying to get there. That's the truth. So it says that they came closer to they. He said the shield bearer in front of him. Yeah. Hey, go over there and see what it's like. See if I can handle it. So if you go ahead now. If you get eaten, ain't no point in both of us getting killed. So you go on. Holler back at me. Let me know how it is. I'm trying to paint a picture of the people that's in your life. It's trying to use you and pawn you. 
in these different aspects of your life trying to get you to go ahead of you know where you, you go ask them and see what they say I see it in my children I ain't married to ask faith hey faith go, go ask daddy if, if, if we can have some of this <laughs> And Faith don't necessarily want it at the time. But Faith comes and says, Dad, can we have so and so? So I say, Faith, I already told you you can have that. And she go back. What did he say? <laughs> what are you saying, Reverend? All I'm trying to say, family, is don't let nobody push you out front to get eaten by the bear. When the Holy Spirit has already given you your instruction. Right yes. Look at the latter part of, uh, of verse 42. It says, when, when, when he saw David was only, and I'm proving a point here. When he saw David was only a healthy, handsome boy, Goliath's eyes filled with contempt. <laughs> point proven. Go out there and see what he like. Oh, Goliath, he a little dude. You ain't got to worry about him. <laughs> Scripture said Goliath's eyes was filled with contempt. Goliath is confident now. Mm -hmm. Goliath confident now. He got his chest out there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What did he say to David? He said, I, I, am I a dog? Hey, Goliath, he got a staff in his hand. Am I a dog that you come to beat me with a stick? <laughs> Thank you, is boy. You can't come out here. He, he starts to invoke David and call him him names. I told you you should have a problem with it. Goliath laughing now. Did you ask yourself the question? Why is the the shield bearer telling Goliath what's going on? I'm gonna tell you that too. Let the Holy Spirit reveal to him. So Goliath goes on and calling David names. He's, 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 he's taunting him and he said, come here. Now I'll feed your flesh to the birds of the air and the wild animals of the field. What are you saying, Reverend? Your enemy sees that you are unlikely, but he does not know that you are not uncapable. All right. He sees that you may be young in what you're doing. Come here, young country boy. That just happened to be the pastor of Mount Zion Baptist Church. He sees that you are young and you still got some green parts about you. So he thinks he can tell you what to do, how to do it, what to do. He's going to draw you in to a fight because he wants to draw you closer to him because he knows when he gets you close enough, he can devour you and get his hands on you and he can have his way with you. Say, come here, come close. Yeah. Right. Why is the shield bearer reporting to Goliath, going out front, and Goliath responding the way he responds? The scripture said that Goliath was nine foot nine. Yeah. Let me paint a picture for you. I forgot what it's called, but any individual that's taller than normal has bad eyesight. Even to this day, you can't, they don't see very well. And so the, the weakness that the lion had was he couldn't see very well. That's why your enemy is drawing you. <laughs> he drawing you into the fight because he got to get you close enough to where he can get his hands on because he can't see very well what God has already promised you and God has already given you a revelation on the thing that you've been praying about. So your enemy got to draw you into a fight. Help me in here, Holy Ghost, to preach your word. And he got to draw you in where he can get you close enough so he can sift you and rob you and beat you. Everything that God has said you could have. You best believe he got some people going out there studying you, surveying you, seeing what you able to do, seeing what your power is in the Holy Ghost. That's why we got to be careful what we're doing when nobody is looking. Because that's an enemy standing by, reporting back to the devil, saying we can get it right here. But there's good news from Lori this morning. Because in all of those things,
things that are going on in the enemy trying to tempt and test David. Bible said that David says to him simply, you come to me carrying a sword and a spear and a javelin as your weapon. That's what the enemy does. He fights us in the physical form. He fights us in a way that we, we, we want to, uh, he wants us to respond the way he fights against us. He fights us with his words. He fights us with his physical uh, element. And he wants us to respond that way. But because we are the children of God, we got to respond like David did. And David says, but I come armed with the name of the, uh, the eternal one, the commander of the heavenly armies. Do I have a witness this morning? The true God of the armies of Israel. The one who has, uh, and you have insulted. I come in the name of Jesus. I come in the name of the Lord. And because I come in the name of the Lord, this is what I'm saying to you, Goliath, that this very day, the eternal one, will give you into my hands. That's why the scripture says the greater is he that's in me, family, than he that lives in this world. I came to tell you this morning, there are some Goliaths. There are some Goliaths in your life. There are some Goliaths in the church house. But we got to learn to come in the name of You may have come from that family who ain't never owned nothing in town. You may have come from the family who people ain't graduating from high school or college. But just because you're unlikely don't mean you're incapable. Because the Bible said that David declared that I come in the name of the Lord, the one who is the king of heaven and earth. I come in the name of the Lord. Be not 
when that military unit begin to rescue that person that they came in for, they asked the captain, said, Captain, what we're going to do? He says, do you understand that when the rules of engagement are put in play, ain't no going back. Family, when the rules of engagement in your spiritual life are in play, you can't be wishy-washy no more. You can't be back and forth on it no more. My pastor used to say, either you is or you ain't. And we got to cut the giant's head off. If we're going to be for God, let's be for God. If you ain't, at least I can respect the fact that you're a devil. I, at least I know you. I can respect the fact that I can't tell you certain stuff. Because you got the devil in you. Scripture says that either you hot or cold. But if you lukewarm, if you straddle the fence, he said, I'll spew you out my mouth. We got to cut the giant's head off. It's that easy. Point blank. Get your feelings off of it and cut the giant of contention's head off. Cut the giant of I'm going to do what I want to do head off. Now, if you can't do that, I ain't mad at you. But don't be mad when I got to do what I got to do. Joshua said, That's me and my house. We're going to serve the Lord. Did you elect me the leader of this house? Yeah. Well, we're going to serve the Lord. We're going to serve him in righteousness. And we're going to do what's right. If you ain't with that, I ain't mad at you. Don't be mad when I ask for your key. Because I ain't going to fight with you. Say, come on, Jesus. <laughs> we got to cut the giant's head off, y'all. Think about it. And I'm, and I'm done. But think about it. He is using the name of our Father. He's blessing me in the name. He's using us to do it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, you ain't using me, Rip. Man, that pastor held too long today. Yeah, he was, it was, it was 12 hours before we got out of there. What did he preach about? I don't know. <laughs> well, I'm a Christian, though. I love the Lord. Using us, y'all. Yeah. Hey, sister girl, you sure look good today. I ain't seen you in a long time. Girl, did you see that she had it on? <laughs> that was awful. <laughs> but I love the Lord, though. Mm -hmm. I'm going to heaven. Thank you, Lord. Yes. <laughs> He's using us yeah. to make our Father look bad. And so when the world sees that, they like, I ain't going over there. The people crazy. Did you hear her cuss and say she loved the Lord in the same sense? <laughs> I'm with you, Pastor. Yes, sir. Anything you said, I believe God in you. Man, come on. We're going to do what we want to do. What are you listening to? you talking about? He's using us. 
Y'all didn't catch that last one. I'm with you, Pastor. Whatever you know, the Lord give you in your heart, I'm with it, man. Man, come on. We're going to do what we want to do. We need this today. Let that giant say it all. He using us. And yeah, maybe you haven't ever held a position. And you probably unlikely because you're the only one in your family that's ever stood up for God. But it does not make you uncapable. David was a young boy. But he was willing to do the will of God. It's how God got Goliath's head cut off. And accomplish. Those are churches open. Whosoever will let them come.